Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Natural Born Hunter podcast. And tonight, we're going to start out with this. Phil, what is better than getting 10% off on your Mountain Ops purchase? Getting 11% off your Mountain Ops purchase? That's true. And what's better than that? Well, we can walk this all the way up, but let's just go ahead and jump right up to 20% off, Will. Yes, let's not annoy our listeners by going <laughs> increment by increment till he gets 20%. <laughs> if you want 20% off your next purchase from Mountain Ops, go to GetMountainOps.com, enter the coupon code NBH20 at checkout, and boom, you get 20% off. I encourage you to do so. I love my Mountain Ops. Hell yeah, they've got great proteins, pre-workouts, they got little... BCA pills that I love, multivitamins. I mean, if you want to get jacked, just take a little Yeti, and you will be well on your way. That's it, man. And you can't beat the new flavor of the Yeti. So check it out, everybody. Once again, NBH20 at checkout. Also, uh, we are able to provide to you a pretty sweet gift code from Maven Optics which is NBH gift. If you enter that at your checkout, they will send you some free Maven swag with your purchase. I mean, these are probably one of the hottest binoculars out there today. They're fully customizable, you know, when it comes to camo patterns, colors, and not only that, they're great glass. I'm going to have Phil tell you a little bit more about that because he had a really nice expensive pair of binoculars and he sold them and got himself yeah, some no, Mavens. I Absolutely, man. I mean, when you when you look at us as hunters, we want the best bang for our buck, right? And not everybody has fifteen hundred or two grand or twenty five hundred dollars to spend on a pair of optics. So why not get as close to the good the quality of what those two thousand dollar pair of binoculars are for half the price? You know, I mean, Mavens put a excellent product together. They've eliminated the middleman and brought you the hunter, you know, the best product they can put together and kept it in a reasonable price. So, you know, if you don't believe us, you know, they're out here, they're finishing first or second in, in all kinds of awards when they're, they're putting their binoculars out there for an independent review. They just took second in a recent review on their spotting scope. And that's, there was over 30 entries into that review. Uh, all the big boys were in there too, ladies and gentlemen. And Maven, yes, on their new spotting scope, took second place in there. I mean, if that doesn't tell you, you know, that they're, they're putting out top-notch quality products, you know, I don't know what it is. Listen to me. It's money. Listen to Will. You know, they're giving us, they're giving us and our listeners the opportunity to, you know, look, if you're watching, check out this sweet hat I got on. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a sweet hat right there I got with my binos, right? So check it out, man. They're going to kick you a free gift. I encourage you to support the companies that are really keeping the hunter in mind. That's right. So it's for Mountain Ops, NBH20 for 20% off your purchase at checkout. And for Maven, it's NBH Gift at checkout. Try them out. At Maven Built, yeah, mavenbuilt.com. That's right. That's right. So get on over there and try them out. And now go on and enjoy the show. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Natural Born Hunter podcast. I'm your host, Will Bradley, along with with my lovely, talented, and always big, sexy co-host, Phil Big Sexy Mendoza. And tonight we are joined by David Farbman, a.k.a. D. Farbs. Some of you may know him as the president and founder of Carbon Media Group, which is one of the top 10 15 digital sports properties in North America, home of Outdoor Hub, and it's a leader in consider the new media as far as the hunting community is concerned uh if you haven't seen it whether it's on facebook uh instagram or really any other place internet reaches the hunting community uh you're mm -hmm. under a rock frankly phil i know you've seen this i know you've seen a lot of our friends and people who've been on the show having shows on it how excited are you tonight oh man super excited can you hear me okay will i got you okay so, yeah, man, I mean, it's, it's one of those things that with the day and age of, of the current, you know, marketplace that is uh, social media and everything else, it's one of those things that 
I don't have to. I don't like having to wait until a certain time to catch my favorite hunting show, right? I like to be able to watch it when I want to watch it. And with what Carbon Media's got going on, they've got some great shows, and and you get to go click on it, and watch it when you're ready. So it's it's literally on, right? It's it's at your fingertips when you want it. So Dave, David, what brought this upon the world? Where did this come from? So, first of all, what's up, Bill? What's up, Will? What's up, guys? Um, I could not agree more, and thanks for having me on. I could not agree more with some of what Phil was talking about, right? Um, viewership today is, I like to say, how you want it, when you want it, where you want it, and that's just how we want media, right? I mean, I'm mid-40s, can't believe it sometimes, but whether it is, you know, my boys are hunter, river, and fisher. They're eight, six, and four. How the hell my wife, you know, let me get away with that. No one knows. <laughs> but the on-demand aspect of viewing today is just where viewers are today, and it's where I find, you know, 40, 50% of my television consumption. Um, what brought Carbon TV on was really uh, what was initially – outside hub and then became outdoor hub and then became uh what was first an ad network or we represented hundreds of web properties on the web this would be back in 08 09 2010 and then a desire to start to grow more out to the consumer side uh introduced outdoor hub introduced action hub and we began to start making moves into being the daily content provider on the web for the outdoors and really took that seriously. So we banded together this large audience uh, over time. We've built properties. We have bought properties. We also represent properties. When I talk about properties, I'm talking about websites, whether they're communities, content sites, feed sites, you name it. Um, we have been really right there, kind of the front edge of aggregating things in a way that was really favorable, whether it's been business to business or business to consumer. And Carbon TV is just one of those, hey, it was time, right? Netflix, uh, Amazon, Hulu, even video on demand inside of cable is quickly changing the game. And I like to say that back when we started this business, it was, geez, 2006, six seven, And I think broadband penetration or just having high-speed internet in rural areas was tipping the scales at like something like 18%. Whereas today, you know, probably more than half of those folks are spending more than half of their time digesting even video um, in a streaming fashion on demand but really even on their phone or on their tablet. And so there's just been this radical shift in seeing that demand being out there in front with Outdoor Hub and around daily content. It was just an obvious play to us that we had to really move on our video strategy to continue to kind of, A, hold a strong market position for advertisers, and then, B, the part that gets me fired up um, was to be able to offer – you know, kick-ass content for outdoor consumers to be able to get it, just like you said, Phil, how they want it, when they want it, where they want it. And therein lies how we went after Carbon TV. And we're all about bringing it free, bringing it to you from the tree stand to your Roku to your Xbox to your laptop, phone, tablet, you name it, 24-7. And that's just like the whole breed of what we are. We think linear and the day and age of program television, unless it is huge category stuff, it's just got a lot of challenges in the future because of tune-in numbers and because of cable companies wanting to drop cost. And, uh, you know, I'm an opportunist, um, and I'm also a real authentic uh, builder of companies. I like to believe our culture has been one of really good authenticity and building strong relationships and, you know, just be willing to take smart risks, but at the same time, making folks feel safe, protected, and treated right. And it has turned out to allow us to build what's become a, a really cool platform, right? I mean, 
who'd have thought we would be where we are today with our audience and digitally. Um, but we've just done the right things, and I think that to some extent, it takes a little bit of genius, a little bit of crazy, and a lot of authenticity to uh, to go out there and, and to build something cool. And that's kind of how Carver Media has, has evolved into what it has. Now, there's not a lot of things you can get these days for free that's actually worth having, right? And I feel like Carbon TV is one of those exceptions. And what I really like about Carbon TV is something that I don't necessarily like about some other media outlets for the hunting industry. And that is, I feel like Carbon TV gives people a chance to be themselves, be authentic, be original, and be different than, say, everyone else you might see out there on the standard outdoors hunting show. Yeah, I agree with that, right? I mean, that's both from the constraints of not having to worry about hitting linear programming timelines and programming limitations and then also putting a little bit more okay. edge to it with what we're going out and uh and producing and that's a um you know the, the bigger picture i just got done doing a couple of keynotes um out west for the professional outdoor media associations so a lot of uh, the independent and freelance writers that are out there in the industry some great people uh, in Kalispell, Montana, and then went over to speak to the National Wildlife Federation at their annual meeting in Estes Park, the trippy two days of travel. But um, the message overall is that the carbon class, we believe, is a statement of something very real. And so hashtag carbon class. Carbon class is not just about running out, shooting a deer, you know, and, and having a celebration. The carbon class is much deeper than that, and it's a connection to the outdoors at a visceral level, right? So even if you don't necessarily hunt and you don't fish, you know, I don't necessarily fully understand that, but if you don't do either of those, but you're just connected to the outdoors, the carbon class is something that you're all about, and the vision that we have for Carbon TV goes so far beyond right what it is in its present form i think it's awesome and going cool places but i believe that the way that we can evolve this in the years ahead uh, are huge it's built on passion and you're right um we are able to give people with a different voice a different edge time to do it and we also see doing stuff with a lot of the folks that you may see in the linear television situations doing offshoots other series different things but um, not stuck to the confines and the constraints of just the linear aspects of, of television today. Because I feel like it doesn't, uh, it's not congruent with the appetites and the desires of both where we are now as a viewership generation and more importantly as a, as a business leader, where we're, where we're going next. So with, with that being said, I mean, just scratching the surface here as to understanding what you guys are, and not getting too much into, into what you have coming down the future, but it seems to me like it's a no-brainer, right? This is what people want. This is this is a home run. Now, I don't mean to to you know, be the negative Nancy, but let's let's talk briefly. You know, you, your competitors probably must not like what you're doing too much, you know. And uh, I'm I'm just I'm just guessing here that because you guys have created this platform and really ran with it and, and are doing so well with it. Uh, you know, what's their response? Are they are they trying to kind of mimic you now with c coming up with the same thing? Are they are they you know trying to deter certain shows or, or platforms from from being featured on your guys's uh, on your your Carbon TV? How does that come about? Is is there much negativity, or does it just seem like there's plenty of pie for everybody? <laughs> Boy, is that a loaded question, eh? <laughs> um, so my uh, my take would be that any time you disrupt, right? And that's what we're doing with American Elements, with American Harvest, with Tough Jobs, with the things that we're, we're definitely beginning to disrupt. We know we're disrupting. We understand it. But, you know, 
the future will define the future. And, you know, we have a really good business platform to be able to really make an R&D investment in this and really go after it responsibly and with the right things. As far as how is it being, uh, you know, adjusted to, look, folks are being territorial. You know, I don't necessarily think to the good of the industry, but, you know, you do have people that get territorial. But I understand that as well. I'm a businessman. But I believe that in the end, um, the better the betterment of the outdoors, the, um, the future of where we're going as an industry, the long term will win out and the future will define the future and it will work out to where there is enough pie for everybody to eat. Certainly there already is. But, you know, folks need to come around to understanding that. And as you guys know, right, the reason your podcast can be successful, the reason that big communities can be built, the reason the social sphere can be what it can become is because of an open source world. And, you know, for those of you who are like, what the hell is this guy talking about? When I talk about closed source, I'm talking about much more rigid technology, things that you might see in healthcare. Um, in hospital systems, things that you might see in government, around regulation, things within automotive. That would be very closed source, proprietary, enterprise type technology, where what's really happened over the last, let's call it decade, you know, decade plus, yeah, really decade, has been the open source era. And the open source era basically just says we can all kind of build off one another much like Lego, we can all build off one another. We can move things faster together as opposed to apart. And I really do believe that the outdoor industry and some of the folks that might be a bit territorial right now will come around to that reality because it's for the betterment of the industry. And what we do, candidly, you know, um, I actually had the opportunity, I was just on the phone with Michael Waddell a little bit ago, and one of the things I think has been neat He's got the number one show on the Outdoor Channel again. Um, Bone Collectors making its way up, and I think a lot of the reason is because of the social horsepower, is because of that extra tune-in that comes from leveraging properties like Carbon TV. And so it actually feeds the greater good, if you will, right? It really drives the traffic and viewership all the way around. And so I think in the end, um, that net return analysis will win out and so will the betterment of the industry. And maybe that's too optimistic, but, you know, I'm a flexible person and uh, I just believe in setting really clear desired outcomes, being very transparent along the way. And most of the time, you know, you take a ding here or there, but most of the time, you know, folks, folks come around and when you have a 35 million, you know, unique visitor a month audience online, and you're innovating kind of out in front of the marketplace, you know, maybe you can be a little more comfortable taking a position like that. But um, I'm confident that as a whole, we'll all work it out. And as a whole, we're going to help producers and outdoor content continue to grow. It's really what makes the most sense to grow the overall industry, which would mean TV, even print, digital, podcast, right? You name it. Yeah, no, I agree. I think the competition really you know, drives innovation and, and, uh, you know, evolution. And that's at the end of the day, that that's what it seems like every day is about, right? Learning something new tomorrow or, or today to help you tomorrow, making something better. And it's, it's, you guys are doing it. So I, I can see that just from, like I said, from, from a business side, I can see that, uh, there, there could be some people that might have some ruffled feathers, but if I was in your shoes, Man, I'd be love to drive. I'd love to be driving that ship because you guys have what appears to be a lot more control. You have a clear vision, and and working with some of the people. I mean, Heartland Bow Hunters and Cam Haynes and some of the stuff you you've got on there. Till death I mean, do us part. Right there, there's there's some great content on there, I'll and back whether course. yeah, whether that's on TV or whether that's on on the internet, it seems like if people want to go find it, it's great that. Not everybody has a TV anymore because freaking cable is so damn expensive, you know. But very few people will go without their internet service. So it's it's uh, it seems to be a great a great place to be for you guys. So, well, Phil, here's a good right, question. Man, you know, if you, and, and, yeah, yeah. I would say it's about the producers too, right? In the end, 
it's those producers that take that camera or two on their payroll. They take those different folks on there. In many cases, they're paying for a lot of that travel, those locations, and they're paying for their airtime. And so the reality of it all is, in at least in my eyes, and I'd have to think in a great deal. I don't ever like to quote something that I'm not certain of, but or not even at all certain of, but I think a great deal of people, viewers, producers, folks that would look at this situation would really agree that it's those producers that own that content it's those producers that have it content is king and they want it and they should be as they should want i want to put it on the biggest platforms they could possibly put it on and as my uh good friend who used to work with us colin anthony who's over at silencer co now rockstar love him miss him he would always say right i mean what we're all about at outdoor hub at, at carbon media through all of our sites through carbon tv is being an amplifier to help the message be spread loud whether it's for advertisers whether it's for consumers to get folks what they want, when they want it, how they want it. Yeah, and the interesting thing about that in Carbon TV is I no longer have cable, right? I used to have it, don't anymore. I just have really fast internet. And I think that's kind of becoming what a lot of people under 40 are starting to do now, which is, you know, they look at it like, oh, man, I can get... HBO a la carte, I can get all these things, get them through an app, cast it on my, you know, either cast it on my TV or they have a smart TV that, you know, directly connects. And something like Carbon Media or Carbon TV is directly poised to service those people. Agreed. Agreed. And, you know, and that's just, I mean, look, whether it's because of technology, not because of technology, I think largely because of it, everybody's busier, everybody's more partial attention right, right now, everybody is just essentially, right, we're putting 32 pounds of crap in a 10-pound bag and attempting to pull it off every day. And as a result, you need something that caters to that, uh, to that appetite, right, to that schedule, that cadence. And you don't always want to deal with, I, I believe that within five years, maybe less, maybe two years, the broadband side, the VOD side, is largely even going to replace the DVR end of things because if you forget to record this or you don't want to have 47 times recorded, you know, there's just a lot of glitches in the DVR methodology because it really, you know, candidly almost follows the old school ways of Betamax, VCR, DVD, you know, in, in its approach. And today I just think that on demand is where the world is and especially where the world's moving. Definitely, definitely. Look at the how great YouTube is, right? It's a lot like that, where you, because of this technology, can become your own personality, your own host, whatever it is you want to do. You can make it centered around what it is you love, and you can reach millions of people around the world with it. Or, or yeah, in turn, no find we, information, right? Or to find, yeah. I mean, I, I have a buddy. He always says I have a degree in YouTube. If you know how to run search right in YouTube, it's a, it's a big thing for how to to you name it. Um, the, uh, YouTube has been another area where we've really helped um, producers monetize more effectively. We uh, years ago structured a deal directly with uh, with Google with YouTube to be able to do stuff direct with them on the multi-channel network side. And it's been you know a tough model for a lot of companies to figure out, but we've managed to. Uh, you know, create a model that has helped producers make some more money. It's not been perfect. It hasn't been perfect on margins, but it's been a really good business, and it's helped us really uh, grow on the video side, and we've really enjoyed that partnership. So totally, totally agree on YouTube. I mean, you know, Google is Google. And the social sphere, right, I mean, to take us over there, um, look, man, when there's an algorithm change socially, it is a um, – it's a real deal thing now, um, you know, the businesses because of the way articles and um, things are pushed out from businesses into that social sphere, the slightest tweaks in an algorithm can really have effects on traffic, time on page, different issues, you name it, right? There's lots of variables. And so when you're playing in a world that is as interwoven as the one we are on the web, attempting to be a guarded off closed source anything is just simply not um, 
taking advantage of being fluid with the marketplace that's growing around you. It just doesn't, it doesn't make sense for, from a long-term perspective. Now, DFARBs, I got to get real with you. On just the level of like, let's say that guy inside, the guy who gets excited, you know, when he moves that needle a little bit more in his direction, right? Do you feel a little bit like the guy who rode the first Model T past the guys in the horse and buggy? You know, I suppose there's days where you feel like you're the guy in the Model T, and there's days where you feel like you're building someone that nobody has any clue what it is that you're building, and then all of a sudden people will catch up, right? You know, I believe that change, um, I just spoke on this recently, but I believe that change is the only constant, right? And that there are two ways to successfully move with change. You either move with it, fluid with it, in which case you're likely in a good spot to be able to move with it and grow with it, or you grow out ahead of it. And if you grow out ahead of it, you're going to get shot at a little bit, but then eventually you're that guy in, right, in the Model T. Or you don't change with it, and you are not going to like where your deer stand is located, you know, years down the road. Right, I mean, deer patterns change, animal patterns change, where morale mushrooms grow changes, everything changes, and as hunters, we have to be fluid with change or out ahead of change, and if we're not, we're not, you know, as Michael likes to say, we ain't going to put old sad daddy on the ground, it's not going to happen, and so... I think that as hunters especially, there's this onus upon us to be smart, be out in front of change, be experimental, and really like be with the open source because it is the future. Um, it is the present and the future of, of the web and the outdoors by no means are, are any exception at all. And speaking of the future, what would you say – are the three biggest up and coming trends in the hunting industry? Definitely women. Um, I took a pretty good brow beating. Uh, everybody loved it, but it, from the NWF, from a bunch of the female delegates that were there for not having enough female content uh, woven into the product, which I totally agree with. It was great feedback. And as I look at the stuff we're seeing, it, it is definitely something that is growing. Uh, I think you, you touched over as well on kind of some of the crossover folks that would be a softer element of making hunting kind of cool and creating more buzz. And I also think it's the crossover sports side. You know, we just got done shooting an American Elements with Chad Mendez, uh, an American mixed martial artist and UFC competitor. I saw some of the first treatments on it. It is sick. Um, this is an American Elements launching here probably in the next week. Maybe it's out. If it is, sorry to my peeps of carbon. I don't think it is out yet. yet so, so. And did that with him. And I got crossover athlete. Um, but, I mean, it started a long time ago. Even crossover country artists, right? Blake Shelton doing some of the stuff that he does within the hunting arenas. Some of the crossover athletes within baseball players, you know, major league bow hunter, right? I mean, you, you, I think that that is, those to me would be three kind of hot trends in a programming sense. And then in the archery side, I mean, eventually you're, we got to stop with the speed because, I, you know, I'm not sure anymore what the difference is if I'm shooting an arrow at 320 feet per second or 345 feet per second. But I think that, you know, accuracy, precision, and uh, sight technology is big. I think that within guns, I do think night optics are huge, especially for hogs and other types of, um, you know, let's call it more uh, preventative hunting that's being done. I think it's a big trend. I'm seeing more and more of it at the different shows or circuits when I'm speaking at different events. Um, and I think that overall, just more and more technology getting better. It's funny, guys, because as a kid, um, one of my best pals was a kid by the name of Chris George, great guy, grew up with me in the Detroit area, and I always wanted, when I say always, you know, most as long as I can remember, wanted a brand um, within hunting that was going to be consumer at some point. And, and I, my name was Natural Born Hunter. 
So the idea that you guys <laughs> did that, that I never trademarked it, kudos to both of you for doing it. It's a killer name. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, it's kind of it's kind of born from two things, the name. One, um, I wasn't born into a hunting family, and when I started hunting, it was one of those things that I knew I was meant to do all my life. And two, I am a big Natural Born Killers fan. I like it. I like it. I'm a, uh, I feel the same way. Um, I really do. When I'm not outdoors for a certain amount of time, I go crazy. Luckily, I, I married a woman that, that makes sense to you, thank God. But, uh, you know, so, but I'm, I feel the same way. I, I'm not out hunting. Something's off. And when anything is running and being responsive and if I'm not after it, it is uh, difficult for me. And that really goes from, you know, morale mushrooms to anything that swims or moves. I just, uh, I, I really buy into the whole kill, eat, repeat scenario that we talk about uh, within Carbon TV. I and mean, I think it's like the cycle that I don't know, keeps on going. Let's get into that a little bit. Um, there is something to hunting, whether, like you said, okay, so then, the mushrooms yeah, uh, or names, species, I have a species, question, just right? as far as being able to capture that content and, it and be able to, you. It you know, builds that excitement you felt when new, you were a little kid. Creative content to people. What's your take there was an unknown, like, just on... Right? Yeah, I mean, it's, I'm assuming you got to have a, land, an opinion, a real, real close connection to this. We so, live so in the now, question is just, you know, what's your take on one of the, the last high rate, great the permit delayed fees to, payoffs to acquire, that you know may never you know, pay permits off to film on national forests? You know, a lot of these, we're all especially hunts out to. west, that happen on public it's land. You can't just run a camera wherever you want without having proper permitting. You know, without looking at individual levels of the parks, the budgets, how the dollars are being used. It's tough for me to really answer that question. What I will say is that over the last, oh, I'd say five to seven years, um, a lot of it is on the shoulders of, you know, people like Colin O'Mara, National Wildlife Federation, Jane Mackinich from the Archery Trade Association, um, you know, different folks from different NGOs around the country. Um, I have seen how government side has really come around with using those dollars in largely more constructive ways that are doing good things for the preservation of, you know, wildlife and conservation. I think that I'm a little bit concerned that our um, wolf population has gotten out of control. And while I, you know, certainly like the nice video and hey i shed a tear like anyone the first time i watched it with how the wolves have changed the rivers you know the bottom line is the wolves have also chased animals down into levels that aren't safe and into places where they don't have the right habitat so i think wolves are an issue we got to deal with in this country i really do um but i think that overall i think that wildlife today there is a good abundance uh the hunting is really solid and i think that depending on where you are state to state um, I think there's pretty, uh, certainly improving in uh, making for better hunting um, and better, you know, just wildlife viewing, birding, different things. I think wildlife is definitely on a, on a good comeback um, with, a little, with little exception. So I hope the dollars are being used constructively. Um, I've heard that complaint a lot of times from folks, you know, going out, whether it's doing documentaries just filming hunting shows because it's another it's another budget expense but I don't know my kind of view is that if the if the dollars are being used constructively and the dollars are going towards conservation and hunting you know I'm kind of one of those hold my nose just pay the fee you know that's kind of my mindset and so I may I may I may put myself in a in a in a, in a class of one there I don't mean to do that but I just that's kind of my mindset and maybe that's more of that sort of open source um, you know, open source mind to what it is, but, you know, I get it because they need to, you know, we need to, we need to continue to generate more dollars. Um, and we need to continue to, uh, to, to work towards strong conservation, clean rivers, clean water and strong, you know, animal numbers, uh, and wildlife numbers period, because it's really on us. It's on man, right? It's on us. I don't say man in a mail up either, but it's on us as hunters, as conservationists, as stewards of the outdoors, as the carbon class 
to continue to grow and restore and replenish, you know, the outdoors. So, Dave, I see you guys have a really cool show on Carbon right now with Cameron Haynes. What's your view on the whole hunter hunter athlete movement and uh, that style of bow hunting? But I think that sometimes Cam gets a tough time because he takes fitness as seriously as he does. But, you know, having spent time around Cam, uh, with the shot, and just seeing him around, hanging out with him, you know, he's just, a, he's just a guy that's real focused on going out there and going 110% all the time. I'm just a huge, huge fan. Um, I think he represents uh, an era of a really cool face for hunting. I think there's always going to be folks that aren't in shape that are going to sit here and find some hole to you know, poke. But I don't know a lot of guys that kill, you know, four bulls over 320 or whatever without a call. You know, I mean, the guy is, uh, he's an absolute specimen. He's an animal. And um, I think he's awesome. And, you know, I, maybe, I, maybe I only see all the positives, but I got to tell you, like, I don't know, man, I think he's a hunting fool. I think he represents um, I think the common man very, very well. And I think he's a cool guy and he's a lot more humble than folks may think he is. And he just wants to express himself and go do it. But he's not sitting there. There and make people jump down and do 50 push-ups. You know, um, I'm a huge fan. I love him. I think Mendez is great. What what he's doing. I think all these athletes coming over to the sport uh, are really cool, and it just grows the sport. And you know, I am definitely a believer in creating competition amongst everything. Right. I mean, I think that Coca-Cola wouldn't be the company that it is without Pepsi and Apple wouldn't be the company it is without Microsoft and vice versa. Right. I think that like, um, it's healthy to keep changing the game and keep, and keep seeing that stuff. So huge Cam Haynes fan, badass. If you didn't see the American elements, it was solid. Uh, we hope to do more stuff with Cam. Uh, we're huge fans and uh, hopefully we can, we'll make that happen here in the, in the near future. Yeah, I agree. You know, it was, it was, it was cool to see that piece you guys put together, but, um, and and even so, more so moving forward, like you said. You, you, so you alluded a little bit to Chad being uh, upcoming, right? An episode with that. But what what else? Can you give us a little insight into to what you have moving forward. So we've got right now today. We're doing um, a good amount of stuff around ag. We really like that ag space. We feel like it's really underserved. We've got some cool things in the outdoor lifestyle. I want to say right now we've got. 15 original shows uh, either in production or getting ready to go. And without talking to my man, Dan Seliger and Jackie and Corey and Neil and the crew back at carbon, I got to be a little, a little hold back. But what I can tell you is uh, should expect to continue to see both with outdoor hub, um, a combination, uh, really good, pure, long form, good content content that folks want to see, uh, also see watchables or snackables that really work for the consumption mindsets of, of folks today. And then uh, across Carbon TV, I think you're going to continue to see original stuff. We're going to keep doing different things. Some's going to work, some isn't. And the cool part about what we do is, you know, we, we get that, right? We, you know, we're going to throw some things off the wall. We're going to see what sticks. We're going to listen to the viewers and the beauty of an open source world is really letting your users and you know what they're digesting and what they like and their thoughts guide it. And I think that if we continue to build the business, um, keeping that front of the mind, uh, it's a real big focus for us. Uh, as I look at this year and as the chairman of the company, you know, my job was to help ensure that the board likes the vision and where we're going. But I can tell you the user is uh, is a huge piece of the game and focusing on what the user wants and um, what the user likes, what's working, what isn't working. And part of being authentic and running a business is knowing that, you know, sometimes you're going to shit the bed, right? And if you do, then you need to, uh, you need to change course. And um, it's really the way we build our company, uh, you know, figure it out, and test it. So you're going to see more and more stuff. And I'm only being a little bit elusive because I'm, not a hundred percent sure what I'm what I'm uh, clear to wrap on and not wrap on, but I, I may end up uh, 
giving you a few plugs afterwards, but I, I need to just run that by. But we have 15 stuff, 15 things currently uh, getting ready to go or under production. And that's all the time we have for tonight. This has been the Natural Born Hunter podcast. Thank you very much, Dave, for coming on. Check out Carbon TV. Head on over to Natural Born Hunter on iTunes. Subscribe. We're on YouTube. We're everywhere you want to be on social media. Thank you all for listening. Wake up, chase your dreams, repeat.